Everyone wants to work with the most successful man on the planet, Elon Musk. SpaceX and Tesla have been on a roll recently, and one potential big-time client is finally teaming up with Elon, the United Kingdom. SpaceX recently won a contract to launch the UK's Skynet 6A communications satellite on a Falcon 9 rocket in 2025. But this Skynet has nothing to do with the self-aware apocalyptic AI from the Terminator movies. This Skynet is a family of military communication satellites that are actually older than the first Terminator movie. The UK established Skynet during the Cold War in the 1960s, and the program has been operational for decades. As the US and Soviet Russia were competing for supremacy during the space race, Britain deployed its first satellite called Skynet 1A to try and keep up. Since then, the UK has launched 15 Skynet satellites, with some still in use to this day. As you'd expect, Skynet 6A is the most advanced iteration of this satellite yet. According to the UK's Ministry of Defense, it is designed to operate for 15 years and will cost the country over 500 million pounds, which equates to $679.5 million. This upgrade will deliver more speed, capacity, and versatility than its predecessor. They believe that with an ever-increasing focus on the importance of real-time information gathering, the growth of drone technology, and the requirement for all parts of the UK armed forces to be able to communicate and coordinate, the capabilities offered by Skynet at six will continue to ensure that these needs are met. Journalist Peter Selding broke the news about SpaceX's deal with the UK via Twitter on November 2nd. He also stated that the decision to choose SpaceX was mainly based on schedule credibility and value for money, a fact that was disclosed by the satellite's main contractor, Airbus. Airbus hasn't always been the UK's main contractor for satellites. The Skynet satellites were previously built by a combination of British Aerospace, Marconi Space, and Astrium from 1974 to 2012. In 2014, the European Aeronautic Defense and space organization was reorganized to combine Astrium, Airbus Defence, and Cassidian into one large entity, Airbus Defence and Space. The UK then selected Airbus Space to build Skynet 6A in mid-2020. Since production just started, several major milestones are still yet to come, but according to Airbus, the satellite remains on track to launch out of Cape Canaveral, Florida on a Falcon 9 rocket in 2025. Following its launch, Skynet 6A will use its built-in propulsion system System to get into geostationary orbit, where it is expected to operate for the rest of its lifespan. Skynet 6A's launch isn't the only order of business for Elon in the UK. According to the Sunday Telegraph, Elon Musk's Starlink is considering a partnership with Vodafone to expand its satellite broadband service in the UK. The Telegraph's sources explained that SpaceX is now searching for ground infrastructure to connect to the backbone of UK fiber networks and high-frequency spectrum. A deal with established operators would be advantageous advantageous as customers increase and the network becomes congested. In an Ofcom filing, Vodafone noted that it was open to talk with satellite operators, and talks are apparently at an advanced stage. Starlink is competing with UK government-backed OneWeb to offer high-speed internet from low Earth orbit to consumers and businesses in regions of the world where terrestrial fixed and wireless communications are not profitable. Starlink and OneWeb are actively seeking out partnerships with telecommunication companies as part of this process. Starlink Starlink has claimed to have signed deals with two major countries' telecom operators, but hasn't named them yet. SpaceX isn't limiting this brilliant Starlink strategy just to the UK, though. According to India Times, SpaceX is set to start talks with Indian telecom service providers like Bharatnet, Vodafone Idea, and Reliance Jio for possible collaborations to offer satellite broadband services in rural and remote regions. Nearly 75% of rural India does not have access to broadband, mainly since most locations still don't have cellular or fiber connectivity. Leo satellite systems are still a bit pricey at the moment, but they're widely regarded as a viable solution to the problem. Experts see India as a key emerging satellite broadband services market with an almost $1 billion annual revenue potential in the long term. SpaceX isn't the only company that's crossing borders in a big way. Elon's favorite EV company, Tesla, is also giving more attention to its global markets. The UK has actually become one of the largest markets for 100% electricity 
electric cars. Tesla is the top brand by a hell of a margin. And the second most popular brand, Kia, didn't have half as many sales as Tesla in the first half of the year. In the first half of 2021, Tesla Model 3 sales dwarfed the second most popular vehicle model, the Kia Nero 3, by an insane margin. Renowned journalist Max Holland produced a monthly report on the UK automotive market and how much it is electrifying. His most recent report extended into the third quarter of 2021, and according to it, fully electric vehicles accounted for 15.2% of all UK auto sales in September, while plug-in hybrids accounted for another 6.4%. According to Holland's data, the battery EV share of the British automotive market typically grew month after month in the first three quarters of this year. The fourth quarter is usually the best for EV sales, so it is very likely that the UK will be getting record BEV sales for Christmas. The eco-friendly news doesn't stop here for the UK. Just recently, Uber struck a deal with Tesla which allows Uber drivers in London to access the EVs as part of an incentive program to boost the use of greener cars. Uber drivers will have access to their clean air fund and have the ability to buy or lease a Tesla. And if you're wondering what the clean air fund is, let's clear that up for you. In January 2019, Uber added a 15 pence per mile clean air fee in London to help drivers with the cost of switching to greener cars. No need to bust out your 4x converter for this one. 15 pence is just shy of a quarter. Since its inception, the program has helped raise 135 million pounds, and funds have built up for each driver depending on how many miles they've clocked up. According to a company spokesperson, the average Uber driver in London has around 3,500 to 4,000 pounds available to put towards making the switch to an electric vehicle. The New Deal is a continuation of Uber's green plan, which has already seen more than 4,000 of its drivers making the switch to EVs. More than 90% of new vehicles joining the app are now EVs, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Thanks to lower running costs and greater earning potential of driving an EV, Uber drivers are flipping the green switch at a much faster rate than the mass market. Passengers in central London have also been given the option to request a fully electric car for their journey since March. This new partnership with Tesla marks a major step towards Uber's goals for all its vehicles in London to be fully electric by 2025. The UK is clearly doing everything it can to accommodate Elon Musk and his revolutionary ideas. Just recently, old rumors surrounding a potential Tesla factory in the UK started to resurface. Two years ago, Elon stated that Brexit uncertainty was a factor in rejecting the UK and going for Berlin as the location for Tesla's Gigafactory, which the company touts as the most advanced high-volume electric vehicle production plant in the world. Despite constant delays and setbacks, especially following the pandemic, the construction of Tesla's Berlin factory continues. Even so, British officials have given up trying to woo the richest man on earth to set up shop there. They stress that annoying state aid rules don't apply outside the EU, which means that there could be significant government funding for a factory in the UK. As of now, only time will tell whether or not Elon reconsiders this offer. All we know is that the UK is calling and Elon might just answer. Until then, welcome to the future.